gears and levers that transfers power from the engine to the wheels. With a manual transmission, you have to shift the gears yourself. But with an automatic transmission, the car's computer determines when it's time to shift and sends an electronic signal to activate or deactivate the appropriate gear. The transmission allows the engine to operate in its most efficient range or power band. It's assembled inside an aluminum housing called the transmission case. At the heart of the transmission are three sets of planetary gears, so named because there are smaller gears rotating around a larger central gear. The first gear set is called the final drive. It harmonizes the engine speed and driving speed. The final drive is attached to the differential, a component that lets the wheels move at different speeds so the car can turn. Workers install the steel parts connected to the shift lever, which puts the car into drive, reverse, or park. First, the manual detent lever. Then, the forward clutch support. The piece protruding from it is called the park paw. The actuator rod connects the detent lever to the park paw. It locks a gear that immobilizes the car when you shift into park. Now for the transmission's five clutches. Depending on what the transmission needs to do, clutches either let gear sets rotate or lock them in place. This clutch is called the forward clutch. By moving the input gear set and the reaction gear set, it enables the car to go forward when you shift into drive. Two clutches installed as one unit go in next. The coast clutch allows the car to coast in low gear and to brake progressively in higher gears when you take your foot off the gas. The second clutch is called the direct clutch. It locks the two gear sets so there's no reduction in speed. Next, the reverse clutch. It moves the reaction gear set so the car can back up. A clutch is made up of layers of metal and friction material such as resin impregnated paper. The transmission's second clutch uses both the input and reaction gear sets to switch the transmission into second, third, and fourth gears. With all the gear sets and clutches now in place, workers can connect the transmission to the rest of the car's electronics. These cables are known as the harness. Next come the drive chain and two sprockets. This hookup is the critical link between the transmission's gear sets and its torque converter. The torque converter is the component that transfers power from the engine to the transmission. The sprockets in the final drive convert the engine speed to the appropriate transmission gear. The car's computer directs this hydraulic control system to change gears as needed. The computer triggers an electronic switch called a solenoid to open a specific control valve. This applies hydraulic pressure, which engages the clutch around the relevant planetary gears. When the hydraulic pressure is released, it disengages the clutch and locks the gears. Now the final connection for the shifting mechanism, linking this manual valve to the detent lever. The shift lever moves the detent lever, which makes the valve direct hydraulic pressure accordingly. This steel bar, called the output shaft, directs transmission power from the final drive at one end of the transmission to the driver's side front wheel at the other end. Next, workers install springs and servos, part of the hydraulic control system that helps engage and disengage the clutches smoothly. This tube assembly goes in next. The control valves route hydraulic fluid through these tubes to the different clutches. Now the torque converter. It spins a shaft that turns the sprockets and drive chain that we saw earlier. A steel bar called a stub shaft is the final link, sending transmission power from the final drive and differential to the front wheel on the passenger side. <laughs> 